Big Step Pro uh, is a also a USB MIDI controller. Uh, so there's a, there's a mode, uh, which is the control mode, which allows you to assign uh, functions to the pad and the knobs. Uh, you still have 16 pads, 16 encoders. Now you have an additional 16 buttons here. So all can be mapped and they can send uh, MIDI notes, they can send program changes, they can send uh, continuous controllers, same with a window of, uh, of values. Um, and so you, you can store the map also in there. But the step sequencer has been the, the part that we developed the most on um, uh, on Big Step Pro. Uh, first, uh, the, the step uh, sequencer, now we have the 16 step buttons, so the pads are not used to do the step on-offs anymore. We used uh, really step buttons for that, and the pads are used uh, for different functions. Uh, the sequences now go up to 64 steps per sequence. And uh, not only you can assign the pitch uh, value of the step, but now you can have uh, independent gate time per step and independent uh, velocity or secondary uh, value for each step. So you have the pitch, the gate, and the secondary value, which by default is the velocity. Um, the, the gate time uh, goes from 1 to 99, so very short gate, to the full length of the step, to tie, which will tie to the next step, to slide, which will proceed slide to the next step the, the way a CB303 would do. Um, and that's one sequence, and you could, uh, that's one sequencer, but that you have two sequencers, you have sequencer one and sequencer two uh, that are identical, and then you have a third sequencer, which is a drum sequencer that has 16 tracks to control uh, drum machines and drum uh, sound modules. So um, we can have a quick look through the unit itself. So everything is color coded. The, um, when you're in sequencer mode, uh, the step buttons change color depending on which sequencer you're on. Um, so everything is color coded to match. The, the screen won't do anything right now. It's just showing you uh, the, the, the software to configure it. But uh, this is a completely standalone product. Right now it's uh, just powered by a, by a USB power supply. Um, well, actually, it's powered by this computer, but I could use uh, the the back panel of the uh, mm -hmm. <coughs> um, of the Big Step Pro. So now you have an on/off switch, a USB connector. So either to connect to a computer, uh, or to an iPad, or um, to just a power supply. Now we have MIDI in and out, and we use uh, those kind of little adapters that go from. Eighth inch to full uh, din. And it comes with them? Comes it with both comes them? with two or three. I'm oh okay. Uh, but uh, so MIDI in and out, and um, MIDI will carry MIDI clock as well in and out. Uh, we've added clock in and out. Uh, clock, you can select to have an analog clock, just a square clock at one pulse per, uh, per quarter. Or you can uh, select uh, to have it as DIN sync in 24 or 48 DIN sync, and uh, the same MIDI adapter will convert that output into a DIN sync. So you can sync CB 303s and uh, other devices that run uh, uh, DIN sync. Otherwise, it's just a standard clock, one CPQ mm -hmm. clock. Yeah. Um, then you have all the CB gate outputs. So uh, again, they're color coded to match the uh, the front panel. So the green, the first sequencer in green has the CV, the pitch CV out and the gate out, and it <coughs> has a secondary CV out uh, for the secondary value of the step, which again by default is velocity, but on a, since it's a CV, you can patch it into a filter uh, controller or anything. Same thing for the second uh, sequencer. And for the drum sequencer, uh, although we have 16 tracks, there are only eight gates because we didn't have a space for 16 gates. Uh, and most analog drum machines, anyway, don't have more than eight um, gate inputs. Uh, when you use through MIDI, uh, the the secondary value of the note is sent through the velocity of that note. Um, through USB, the same thing. Um, you can have a MIDI channel for the sequencer one, so MIDI channel for sequencer two, MIDI channel for the drum sequencer. Uh, by default, it might be 1, 2, and 10, but uh, that can be changed. Um, and so there, there are a few uh, other cool things. So 
Uh, right now, the way it's configured, I have sequencer one going through CD gate to the mini boot. And I didn't stop. Oops. And I was going to the mini boot. There we go. And that's sequencer one here. So I only have an eight step sequence right now, and I can uh, reverse, reverse, alternate, random, uh, no, triplets, sorry. As random is different. And uh, change the last step. Uh, change the speed. So that's CD gate going to the to the mini boot. And when I'm in stop, it also normally. Oh no, this one. Okay. Uh, because I'm on the gate time. Okay. It sends the value uh, that that step will have. Uh, one thing we've added, uh, if you can see, there's a little display here, which is normally for the tempo display. All the knobs have been changed to touch knobs. So now if I want to know the pitch of step two, I just touch step two and will display the pitch value of the step. It's much easier than going or m changing the value to know where it is. Uh, so if I'm here still on that sequence one, if I change uh, the knobs to gate, adjust the gate and the velocity would be through uh, on the CV gate you wouldn't do anything I wouldn't need to use the, ex the additional CV output for instance I could pass in a VCA or in the VCF to modulate each step independently nice um, so that's sequencer one I can mute sequencer one sequencer two is going through MIDI to the micro boot here and the same thing applies Delicious. Oh yes. So again, you can adjust. Uh, same thing. You can adjust. You can adjust the gate. We're not using the, the pads for the <coughs> for the sequence anymore because we have the step buttons. So the pads are used transpose. So it shows the chromatic keyboard. Oh, I see. And here are the octaves. <coughs> Very easy. Uh, if you have a MIDI keyboard connected, since we have a MIDI in now, you can use the MIDI keyboard to transpose or to enter notes. So if I'm on a um, empty sequence, so I can go to a, another sequence here on sequencer two. Right now there's nothing. I'm just gonna hmm. change it in my setting bar. Okay, uh, I have to figure it out. Uh, I can go into record and go. <coughs> So if I have a keyboard, same, I can do real-time recording. Of course, it's quantized to the steps uh, because it's a step sequencer. Uh, so you can transpose. Uh, of course, you can run both sequence at the same time, which will be interesting in this case. So you can transpose independently. Would this 
if you put a MIDI notes in there, will it, will it respond to MIDI CCs like a mod wheel and stuff like that and everything? Or mod wheel, you mean for what purpose? Like, like, it, like, so say for example, I'm uh, just just because you can you can do cut off on those, for example. So if yes. I had a MIDI keyboard, if I had a MIDI keyboard, where could, if I just started just shoving in random, um, just pitch wheel or mod wheel stuff. Will it pick it up on that? or does No, it, it will not record MIDI yeah, CCs, okay. but it will send MIDI CCs from the right, controller mode. Right. So in the, in the controller mode, um, if I have, uh, through MIDI, um, a synth on sequence on uh, channel 1, another synth on channel 2, I can create a controller map that has... With the knobs. Uh, yeah. on, the, on the same controller map, I yeah. can have multiple knobs on channel 1 and multiple sure. knobs on channel 2 on the same map, so I can be tweaking the filters of both sequencers as they play. The, uh, uh, the last step, on uh, is that independent of each sequence? Independent for each sequence, and the play direction is independent for each sequence. So you could have them both, say, at 16, yeah. and then start ratcheting, doing a manual ratchet on one sequence? Well, for instance, right now, sequence one, sequence one is just eight steps, while sequence two is 16 steps. Uh, I want to change uh, the direction of sequence two. independent uh, the only thing you can link is a transpose and also uh, because you can change individual sequences you can also uh, link the sequences so when you change them they change at the same time so if you have uh, a first pattern and then a yeah. chorus pattern and you can s select whether they change absolute all at the same number or relative to where they were um, so again a big evolution <coughs> in the features of the sequencer um, in addition to that, we've added a drum sequencer. So this one has 16 tracks, and I have only one left. Oh no, it's a drum sequencer. So here I've mapped uh, the, uh, the drum pads to match the 16 drum pads of a uh, spark. Uh, so now each time I select one of the instruments, I have a track per instrument. So if I create a new sequence that has nothing on it, if I select the kick drum, then I can put it here. And then and, and so on. So again, I can program it like an 808. But again, I have the uh, the record button, so I can be uh, okay. So now I can do also real time recording. Um, we've added also there's a since there's no pitch per um, uh, on the drums because the pitch just decides which note it is, and we already have the 16 tracks for that. Um, we replace the pitch parameter of the other sequences by the shift parameter. So anyone who's familiar with our Spark software, uh, when we use Spark as a drum machine, the step sequencer or Spark as a shift parameter, which is the timing of each step of each track independently. So you can say the snare hit on five is a little early or the hi-hat plays a little late. So you can adjust this with the knobs here or you can um, turn quantize off on the drums and record the drums uh, real time and will calculate automatically those offset values whether you're playing or were you rushing or were you dragging <laughs> that's the question so what about flam can we do flams uh, flams uh, there's no flam function uh, in there so you can get one step really late and the other one really early and they will be close but there's no flam per se, function. And shuffle, I would assume. There is, and there is a dedicated knob now for shuffle. <laughs> and now there's, there's a dedicated button, and I can choose whether it's global for the machine or for the current sequencer only. So I can have... And we added, in addition to shuffle, we added a, ra a randomizer, again, that can be global or per track, where you can adjust the amount 
of random and the probability of random, how often it will randomize and how far from the current nodes it will go in randomizing. Uh, so again, go over track. And we also added a touch strip here, uh, which is only one axis of the XY pad on Spark, which allows you to do uh, rolls or loops. So it will allow you to stutter on a th 30 second of a step or a, a 16 or eight or fourth of a step. So you can do real time stutter effects or rolls. Um, da -da 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 -da. So uh, you have projects. So one project is 16 sequences one, 16 sequences two, and 16 drum sequences. And you have 16 projects. So that gives you a total of 16 times three times 16 sequences, which is 768 sequences of 64 steps. All that can be stored in the uh, Big Step Pro. Um, da -da 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 and we can do everything from the hardware without going into the software, right? Uh, the software, uh, <coughs> that, that software here, allows you to configure the controller mode. Um, it also allows you to um, back up and edit your drum sequences. You have a grid editor for oh the wow. drum sequences. So you can do the, well, it's not connected to actually to the software right now, so you can do it there. But you would have the drum sequences with a swing parameter and the random parameters for the drums, the sequence list and the divi time division and playback directions for the drums only. And then you have a uh, piano roll editor for the sequence one and sequence mm. two with their individual. So you can use that only to back up anything you've done live on the machine, but you can also uh, use it to program here the, <coughs> the sequences, and you'll be able to export, import, and export those sequences as MIDI files. Or actually not, uh, I'm trying to remember if it's MIDI files or if it's in a format that you can convert into MIDI files, but you can uh, at least import and export those sequences out of the, uh, out of the box. What does the, uh, the probability function do here? Uh, the probability is how often it's going to pick the random notes. Okay. And the randomness is how far it's going to go. And the way it works, um, instead of being completely random, because you have scales uh, in, uh, in that, I, I don't know if I mentioned that, but um, big step at that already. Uh, if I'm on sequence so one or sequence, uh, sequence so two, um, and I'm done, and I'm on pitch. I can select scale, for instance, if I want to go in a blue scale. Um, so the way it, uh, the randomizer works, it's not completely random. What it will go, it will look at the steps that are currently programmed, and it will also at the look at the muted steps. So you can enter notes in the steps that are not playing. Uh, for instance, on, the, on this sequence, uh, I'm only playing step one, uh, five, uh, nine, and 13, but I can enter value in the, in the muted steps, and the random will go pick, not a random value, but a value that's one of those steps, including the muted steps. So that allows you to control, actually, the random, because it means it's not completely, <coughs> uh, not be completely, completely random. Um, so again, probability is how often it's gonna pick a different note, and uh, randomness, is how far it's going to pick a note from the current note. So that, I don't know if it's uh, completely implemented in this version. Uh, let's see. Let's see. not completely completely random it's a controlled chaos in some uh, in some how um, what else so uh, the uh, analog clock yep. you, you have complete control over the uh, pulse per quarter note or uh, yeah it can be one PPQ or 24 or 48 okay so no eighth notes or uh, not that I know of. okay uh, one thing you have control of is the uh, the type of CV the that you're using for each sequencer, you can select whether you're using hertz, volt per octave or hertz per octave. So it will play with a cork friend. 
as well. What about syncing to an external host as far as the claw? Oh, um, yeah, through... Um, it can be the slave or yeah, the master? Yeah, yeah y here you have the, um, this, uh, the <coughs> uh, source, so it can be internal. It can be the USB clock coming from a uh, USB software. It can be the MIDI clock coming from a drum machine or something like that. And it can be uh, the sync clock that you get up. And it will uh, slave to one and output the others. So it's also a nice gearbox. Same way, it will receive uh, data through USB or through MIDI and convert that into the CD uh, gate out. Right. Uh, the and, and when you're doing the sequence, is there a mode where the pads can represent different sequences? So you um, can like not sequence? the pads, not the pads, but the, uh, the the buttons here. So right now, what I'm not even sure what uh, button, what sequence is that. <laughs> Actually, I didn't save that, so... Um, okay. I'm here. So uh, right now, I haven't saved any other... I think I can save sequence to something. Uh, yeah, I'm happy. yeah, so... Uh, here I have uh, one, two, and that's it, so I can... Uh, if I hold the sequence, I can go directly to the sequence I want, so I could go to 16 directly. Okay, fine. And again, that can be linked with the other sequence or completely independent, so mm -hmm. you can jump all the sequences or just one. Cool. Um, Is there any copy-paste functionality without mm, software? No, no, there's not. Um, there's a tap tempo and a tempo entry here, so if, uh, if you're internal. Um, so again, up to 64 steps, so to do the third value, I think that's about it. So the, the transpose, which uh, the keyboard. Retail price and when it's gonna be on the market. So it's uh, street price 249 Jeez. and availability we ship uh, in one month. It's in production right now, so in one month they will be shipping in the US. Powered by an iPad, and since there's only one USB connector, the in the box we provide a USB-T connector or Y connector, depending how you look at it. Mm -hmm. uh, but that allows you to connect the iPad on, a, on one side, the big stepper on the other side, and the power supply mm. in the middle. So that will still allow you to do that. And it will have other use, um, uh, the fact that you're able to split the, uh, the USB off the, uh, off the big step photo.